very good evening to you. Welcome to our second evening of Unlocked, day 101 of lockdown. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is Tom, uh, part of the church family here at St Thomas's. I'm one of the vicars. Um, and we are live again in the Vicarage Garden as we continue to think through the challenges we are facing as a community. Uh, Costa del Kilnhurst is lovely at the moment. Uh, I believe rain might be coming later on, but we are, we're hopeful that it might uh, kind of come after we've finished our little time together. But wherever you are joining us tonight, uh, whether it's on Facebook Live or YouTube, uh, we're so grateful that you've joined with us again. And we hope that these evenings could just be really helpful as together we wrestle through uh, events in life together. Uh, we started yesterday as we recognised just how significant this uh, pandemic has become for all of us. Uh, no one is unaffected. None of us can just sail through untouched. Uh, we will all know someone who has had the virus. And tragically, uh, many of us will know someone who has died as a result of it. Uh, these are, are hugely relevant things for us to be thinking about. And so as a church family, we wanted to take some time to explore what the Christian faith has to say and, and particularly how the good news of Jesus Christ connects so helpfully with what we as a community are going through. If you were with us last night, we saw how uh, true security uh, can be found in a world with rocked foundations. And tonight we are going to move from true security to true uh, togetherness, to community, with our title of Unlocking Togetherness in a World That Keeps Its Distance. As a bit of a snapshot for our running order, a sneak preview of what's coming up. We've got an interview with someone from our church family. And then Andy is going to bring us a talk from the Bible. And then, well, it's over to you. Uh, just like last night, we've got a dedicated slot set aside for any and every question you would like us uh, to try and answer. Uh, whether it's something Andy says in his talk that you would like to pick up on or something more general, we would love to hear from you. Uh, the details should be on your screen. You can text us in on 07493. 374411. Or secondly, you can comment on the Facebook stream or messenger us uh, via Facebook Messenger. Or your third option is to comment under the YouTube stream. And we've unlocked all of that this evening, so you can, you can comment uh, wherever you'd like. And we'd also love to hear from you wherever you are. Uh, so if you just hit the like button on either Facebook or YouTube uh, and tell us uh, where you are watching them from, that would be brilliant. Uh, but our topic this evening is unlocking togetherness in a world that keeps its distance. And so I'd like to welcome along uh, uh, my friend, part of our church family here, uh, Sue Lamprell. Last uh, three months or so, I guess the, uh, the the pandemic that we're all in at the moment. How have you found that? Uh, how has it been a change to your normal uh, routine and way of life? Uh, well, I've been on furlough since about the middle of April. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's been a bit odd, really, um, being at home all the time. Um, being at home itself is no different to normal because I'm at home on my own generally. So, yeah, that's that's not much different. Um, but it's it's been tough not being able to see... Uh, people outside of home, um, yeah, that's yes. been quite hard. Yeah, I, I imagine. And, well, as, and what, what's been the hardest part of that for you? Can you unpack a little bit of that for us? So I guess uh, certainly not, not meeting at church has been really hard. Um, it's been great to be able to meet together on Zoom, um, and that's been really, that's been a real bonus for me. Um, uh, and, uh, but not being able to see people, not being able to have hugs with people, um, you know, I, I love giving and receiving hugs, so that's been really, <laughs> that's been really hard. Um, and just not being able to share fellowship with one another, you know, missing the worship in church has been uh, really hard. Uh, and I've been, I guess, really concerned about my mental health being at home on my own so much. Okay. Um, 
that's yeah that's always a, a toughie really uh, but thankfully uh, I've been coping okay brilliant brilliant thank you um, is there a particular aspect of community that you've you've really kind of noticed that you've missed maybe that surprised you I think you're Am I right in thinking you're part of the Kilnes Community Choir as well? Yeah, I am. Tell yeah. us a bit more. So, yeah, Kilnes Community Choir is great. It's fantastic. And we love getting together on Thursday evenings. Okay. And boy, have we missed it. But we have been meeting again on Zoom. <laughs> um, and actually, that's been a real boom because I've been able to, to sing to myself in my own home. No one else can hear me. So I don't <laughs> have to worry about being out of tune. It's great. Um, but yeah, we, we really miss meeting together and there's quite a few people there that can't get onto Zoom if they're not on the internet um, or don't feel comfortable with it. And so we're really missing some of the, some of the members of the choir. Um, not okay. It's been, been hard. Brilliant. Well, obviously you're, you're here, you're, you're part of the church family here. You're, you call yourself a follower of Jesus. Yep. What does, that, what does that look like in a world today? How does following Jesus uh, make a difference? in a world like this and where does church begin to fit into that? Well it's great to be uh, a part of the church family and I think family is just the key thing for me. It's um, my, All my biological family are down south okay. um, and so... In to, Essex? In Essex, okay. yep, yeah, uh, and some in Wiltshire as well um, and so to have people here um, who I, I class as my brothers and sisters in Christ um, they're people that I can rely on, they're friends that I can rely on. Uh, I know they're there for me when I need them. Yeah. Um, and when I'm feeling down and struggling, I know that they're going to point me back to Jesus um, and to the hope that I have in him uh, and in his resurrection and uh, from the dead, from dead to, to life again. Um, I know that through that I have the hope of eternal life in heaven um, because he's forgiven me my sins. Um, and so to have friends around me who can just say, look, Sue, keep, keep focusing on Jesus and what he's done for you is, um, yeah, it's a great help. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, that's, re that's really helpful. To hear. It's wonderful to hear as well that, that kind of the, the biological brothers and sisters might be a long way away. There's a spiritual family that you... Yeah. And has that kind of come through for you in lockdown? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I've had a few health uh, blips during uh, lockdown. Uh, and people have been really great supporting me through that brilliant. and um, yeah helping me to try and get fit so yeah. <laughs> brilliant brilliant well uh, one final question for you if, if that's all right and um, what are you most looking forward to as life starts to become unlocked again I'm really looking forward to being able to eat with people again okay um, just yeah um, being able to go around to a friend's for a meal um, <laughs> would be absolutely great um, and then being able to give people hugs as well. Okay. Um, yeah, they're the, 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 they're the sort of physical things, and then I think the spiritual things are getting back into church um, and being able to worship together fully. Yes, um, okay. Yeah. That, that togetherness. Being the just... together, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Well, Sue, thank you very, very much. It's so good to have you here, and thank you for being brave enough to come and tell us a little bit about both the joys and the struggles we are we're so grateful for that uh, and for for those watching in at home I, I wondered if if I can just encourage you to, to think about Sue's experience and I wonder if you can connect to it are there are there bits that you see in your own experience that that, that match up with uh, the way she has, has seen things and how is that how does your experience kind of um, overlap with that uh, we would love uh, to hear from you as a reminder so please do uh, text in any questions that uh, Sue will be in our panel later as well, so she can pick some of these up. You can text in on 07493 374411. Or once again, you can comment on Facebook or Facebook Messenger or under the stream on YouTube. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Andy, who is going to come and bring us our talk for this evening. Good evening from me as well. Thanks so much for joining us. And yeah, this is the, the Bible talk part of the evening. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we go. Uh, if you've been to see any football in these last couple of weeks, you'll know uh, that part of the new setup is artificial crowd noise. Uh, whether it's 
Uh, made up cheering, made up booing or forever blowing bubbles, the critics had been divided. Now, do we want pretend crowds or no crowds at all? They're still playing football, of course, but the beautiful game just isn't as beautiful without the togetherness that comes from 40,000 friends cheering things along. I clicked on a blog the other day which listed 63 things we've missed during lockdown, including iced coffee, uh, fake tan, cream eggs and cheesy chips. And if you ask most people, uh, we'll have all missed some of those things, I'm sure, uh, especially the cheesy chips. But for most of us, the thing we've missed the most, well, it isn't our work or our football or our holiday at the coast. It's not been Meadow Hall or Mackie D's or even getting the mullet attended to. And what people have missed the most is people. Our nearest and dearest, those we love the most in this world, our friends from old times, our mates from the pub, people that have still been dear to us, but for a long time couldn't be near to us. We've longed for togetherness and it's tough being apart. Now, the government, government didn't make us self-isolate for nothing, did they? 312,000 cases and 43,000 deaths. COVID-19 is a deadly disease and lockdown has been a key strategy in controlling the spread. But even though it's been essential, it doesn't make isolation any easier. 100 days is such a very long time. More than a quarter of a year since this all kicked off. We've missed weddings and birthdays. We've missed the Grand National and Glastonbury. And we've missed the togetherness and the belonging that all of us were made for. I read an article the other day that said people have been turning to their Alexas and Google Assistants for company. No longer is Alexa just a black box in the corner. For some, she's becoming, well, a real friend, a soothing voice, a personal confidant, to which we form an emotional attachment to such an extent that, well, some will share their, their deepest thoughts and feelings with a disembodied voice in the cloud. So if you should confess... Alexa, I'm feeling lonely. Well, she'll reply with some kind advice about phoning a friend, listening to some music perhaps, or going for a walk. With a very personal note at the end, she'll say, and I hope you feel better soon. Well, but look, we are kidding ourselves, aren't we, if we think that the soulless interaction with Alexa, or Siri, or, or anyone else for that matter, can make up for the togetherness and belonging that we were made for. Since the very first day of creation, it's been a, a really basic human need to love and to be loved. People need people. And we miss them terribly when they're not there and we can't be together. Well, the man that we meet in the Bible tonight was an expert in social distance. He knew lockdown living before that had even been invented. And way before Zoom calls and FaceTime, his isolation was every day a permanent reality. Uh, can you imagine 14 weeks without any human contact whatsoever? Well, this guy had been there, done that, got the t-shirt, he had, had lived a lifetime. Uh, empty diary, empty life, despite uh, everything. Well, desperate, didn't even begin to cover it. Uh, listen, as I read some verses from Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Well, we can see now why this man was a social outcast. No one wanted to be the friend of a leper. His skin was horribly sore and disfigured. Leprosy was highly contagious and there was no known cure. Here was a man who knew 
what it was to live every day on the outside. In fact, in those days, he had a duty. He was compelled to stay on the outside. It was laid down in the Old Testament in one of the books of the law, a book we call Leviticus. And we can read there uh, these couple of sentences where uh, the person with an infectious disease must wear torn clothes, let his hair be unkempt, cover the lower part of his face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as he has the infection, he remains unclean. He must live alone. He must live outside the camp. It sounds like Matt Hancock, doesn't it? Stood at the podium of yet another government briefing. Stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. Well, here's Leviticus uh, all those years ago. Who knew that 2,000 years ago, face coverings and social distance would be used to slow the spread of the virus? So here's a legal requirement for those with leprosy to live in isolation. They were considered unclean. And that meant the rest of society was off limits. It meant the temple and especially the priest would be off limits. In those days, the temple represented God's earthly presence. So the temple meant no God, no faith, no hope, no forgiveness. And so he cuts such a very lonely figure in his torn clothes and his long hair and the humiliation of spending every day crying out unclean unclean to anyone who would come near in some ways of course it was only sensible precautions well, of course it was just as some of us have been self-isolating to stop the disease getting any further but do you see the difference uh, living on your own outside the camp will stop others getting sick but it won't make you any better. Covid isolation wards are put there for people to recover. They're filled with doctors and nurses clad in PPE, courses of drugs, ventilators on standby, it's te a temporary home, while we're treated for the disease. Living outside the camp just couldn't make you better. It wasn't a place of hope, it was a place of loneliness and captivity. Which is what makes this encounter with Jesus so well, so remarkable. In desperation, the leper falls to the ground at the feet of Jesus and he cries out from behind his face covering, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And without a moment's hesitation, Jesus steps forward and he did what no one else would ever dream of doing. He reached out his hand and he touched the man. I am willing he said be clean it's remarkable isn't it the son of god from heaven touches the untouchable he deliberately puts himself in harm's way in order to liberate the life of another here is restoration the man could only dream about his first human touch in ages and it completely cleaned him on the outside perhaps more importantly access to god in the temple once more which is why this conversation was so important. It's where the conversation ends. Jesus knows the skin disease on the outside is only half the story. Uh, the man has a deeper, more pressing need. His skin problem points to a sin problem on the inside and the need of forgiveness that only God can give him. And that is why the very next thing that happens is for Jesus to send the leper to the temple. Show yourself to the priest and go make your sacrifice. Uh, go to the temple and meet with your God. Be forgiven of your sin and bring to an end that social isolation between you and the one who made you. And as he's restored to God, so he comes back to people. It's a win-win, isn't it? He can now take his place with others, enjoying togetherness of belonging in community because first he belongs to God. And so how does the touch of Jesus unlock this part of the Bible for us this evening? We don't have a skin disease, do we? But we do still suffer from that deeper problem. Like a deadly virus coursing right through our veins and arteries, sin has still got us. It's still a part of who we are. In these last three months, they've shown us that, haven't they? Uh, they've brought out the very best and the very worst in each of us. The hands that have clapped the carers 
are the same hands that have grabbed the last roll of Andrex off the Tesco shelf. The kind words which we've used to comfort an anxious neighbour are the same words turned to frustration and anger against our spouse and our kids. We might not be sick with leprosy, but this unhealthy desire to put our fir ourselves first is a symptom of this greater sickness, the sin that is in us that only God can forgive. There was so much more to Jesus' life than healing sick people. Jesus came to suffer and die to deal once and for all with the problem of sin. He went to the cross. He deliberately threw him himself in harm's way to liberate my life and yours. He faced the cross and he said, I am willing. He took that sin from us. He died in our place so that we can be forgiven. And in doing so, he won for us the ultimate togetherness, restoration and community with our Father in heaven. Just like the leper, uh, cleaned up, made new, forgiven and restored, together now with God and his people, with the certain hope of togetherness forever when we die, in a glorious new creation that God is preparing for all those who love him. We live in a world that in many ways keeps its distance. But in Jesus Christ we have a God who's come near, so very near, that he touched the leper and he reaches out to you and to me. This is God with us. He's come to rescue and restore. Now I can pour out my heart to Alexa, but here is something so much better. Genuine togetherness with the God who lived among us with God in human form. And Jesus invites us into the deepest of personal relationships, the kind of togetherness in good times and in bad that will never let us down. Maybe these days of lockdown have been showing us the things that are really important in life, not stuff or money, not football, not even cheesy chips, but people and relationships. And if the story of the leper tells us one thing, it's not to miss out on that one relationship that really matters, the togetherness with God that can be ours in Jesus Christ, cleaned up, restored and forgiven if we put our trust in him. Well, in a couple of minutes, we are going to have our question time. So I'm going to invite the panel to come and uh, join me. We're going to have a, a few seconds to switch things around. Uh, and so uh, we'll be back in just a moment for the question time. Well, friends, it is good to be uh, together now. And uh, welcome to uh, my friends on the panel here. We have uh, Sue, who we met earlier. Hello, Sue. And Andy. we have Wendy uh, also Hello. with us tonight as well. Uh, thanks, Wendy, so much for joining us. And, um, and here we are. Uh, so I'm going to uh, find our first question. If we have any. Do we have any questions as yet? No. OK. So, we need your questions. Uh, we're just going to put the phone number on the bottom of the screen. Oh, here it is. Uh, it's 07493 374411 is the number to text. Here's our first question. I'm really pleased that's arrived. That's <laughs> excellent. Uh, what's it like to be together with Jesus day by day? Interesting. What's it like to be together with Jesus day by day? Um, Wendy, do you want to <laughs> have a little go at that one? What's it like to be with Jesus together with Jesus day by day? Yes. Um, so I think it's oh, quite a hard question, isn't it? What you were saying in the talk struck a chord with me in terms of um, like art, the kind of the way we can be quite two faced 
and so you know words of comfort that I might offer to someone will come from the sea of mouth that will then lose it with my children um, and I think the um, that's kind of because we've got nowhere else to go and nobody else to share <laughs> things with at the minute that's been really highlighted for me um, um, but my togetherness with Jesus is that through um, the extra level of anxiety that I've been having um, the extra uh, temper tantrums that me and my children have had um, actually knowing that Jesus sees the very worst of me yet loves me um, more than anyone else um, has been a massive comfort um, and is in control of these things that I can't control either um, so in my anxieties in my in my losses of patience um, the togetherness I have with Jesus um, means that um, somebody bigger than me and more gracious and more loving is the one who's in control and um, he is the one who has um, pay for me he's he saved me um, and I am his and um, despite those things so um, day by day I think that's what that's what it's meant to me um, especially in this lockdown time great okay no yeah, that's excellent um, Sue anything to add from your perspective uh, yeah I, I think um, <laughs> before uh, early on in the year we were doing a, a real change course and looking at how uh, we could change personally uh, and one of the things that I said that I was doing a lot was was uh, I was grumbling too much about stuff um, uh, and a bit like uh, Wendy in lockdown it's really difficult that's progressed because I'm not in my normal situation um, so it'll be really interesting when we come out of lockdown to see whether um, Jesus has really helped me in making that change of being more thankful for things uh, and not grumbling about stuff uh, so much um, but I think just being able to come to him each day knowing that he's not a distant uh, God but he is actually here with us um, and we can speak to him each day uh, is just such a huge comfort and yeah r really um, helpful uh, in going forward and, and keeping ourselves strong. Fantastic thank you. I have another question here put so much importance on going to church um, so have a little think about that why do Christians put so much importance on going to church and um, let me add um, I'll give my thoughts on that to begin with um, I was saying wasn't I in the talk how when you become a Christian uh, you get a new father uh, God in heaven uh, you get a new brother in the Lord Jesus Christ but wonderfully you get a new family as well and they're all the other people who've decided to start following Jesus as well and so uh, we end up with um, joining in with God the Father in heaven in the wonderful things that he's doing uh, but we also get to spend time with other people who think following Jesus is really important too and so I can encourage you and you can encourage me and we do that together and everyone ends up being encouraged because actually following Jesus is actually quite hard to sort of keep it up and keep it going and so we need all the encouragement that we need don't we uh, that, that we can get um, so that's what I would say and church is the, the sort of uh, uh, the best hour of the week when all the uh, all of God's people get together uh, and we spend time together we praise our father in heaven uh, we have uh, the bible uh, read and explained to us uh, we encourage each other in our faith we sing hymns to praise God for all he's done um, it's great isn't it yeah um, anything to Add to that either of you. I think one of my favourite pictures um, that the New Testament gives um, of like Christian life um, is running a race um, and kind of pressing on that kind of picture of being a marathon runner mm. um, and just yeah what you were saying the if you think about the the sports metaphor um, great runners they need their team behind them don't they um, so like church is like our team and part of your team, part of mine, <laughs> yeah. and we run together. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a really helpful picture. Brilliant. Um, so we've got lots of questions coming in, so perhaps we'll move on to another one. Um, any helpful advice for someone struggling to pray and read the Bible through lockdown? Um, uh, well, I... Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was finding it really hard. And, and actually finding uh, another friend to read the Bible with is really helpful. Um, so I've paired up uh, with a friend and we've been right reading the Bible together. We've not managed it every day, um, but we're gradually getting into it. Um, so yeah, I think finding someone else to to read the Bible with and and to pray with is a really helpful way of doing that. Excellent. Yeah. So find a friend and um, I mean staff team here. That's uh, we meet every morning through the week uh, to read the Bible and pray, uh, and that's just a great encouragement uh, every day. That bit of uh, routine and discipline, and it's just really good to um, to do that together uh, as well as doing it um, apart, of course. So here's a question. Um, with church buildings closed and people unable to meet up and encourage each other's faith, it can be easily to feel disconnected from God in a weird way. How would you reassure someone if they're feeling like this? Have any of you felt like this during lockdown? Disconnected from God when we can't meet as a family. We I think there's, uh, there is a, a sense of disconnection, but I think because we've had the technology and being able to, to come together on a Sunday over Zoom and with you doing the, your Bible talks on, on a daily basis, um, that's, that sort of help us, helped us keep connected. Um, but without that, it would be really easy to, to lose that connection, um, uh, which is why it's, it's really good if we can uh, join in with those those services um, and I've been I've found that I've been joining services from friends churches around the country as well so I, I've almost been enjoying more um, yeah more time together uh, with Christians that I wouldn't normally spend time with um, because of because of the situation we're in um, so yeah I've been able to nip into my friends church service down in Basingstoke and yeah um, another one up in uh, uh, Pr Pruda, um, right. <laughs> yeah. So all over the country. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. I'm thinking back to the leper. Of course, he was somebody who was totally isolated, um, and the first thing that he him to do is he had to make his connection back with the Lord Jesus mm. uh, to the Father, um, which then gave him a family um, that he couldn't have before. Um, and so again, lockdown has could feel a bit like that we could feel a little bit like the leper in the mm. way of we can't meet face to face and we need that human touch and yeah. human contact and we all need a hug from time mm. to time and if you can't have that because you're living on your own then it is going to be a tough time which is why i guess we were as a church family trying to um, do as much as we can to sort of just keep things going mm. along even in a in a strange time yeah um here's a, a slightly deeper kind of question why did God make us to need relationships so I think the what I hope is the right answer but you can correct me um, <laughs> is that God is a relationship himself mm. by nature Absolutely. Um, so um, uh, we know God um, there is one God but he is Trinity um, which is not a very long word, but a word that we struggle to understand, but that he is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, and so he's made us because he loves relationship, and he's made us to be like him, um, which means that we will need relationship as well. Um, that's the first thing that comes to the top of my head. Absolutely. I mean, the yeah. very first page of the Bible... Oh speaks about a God who makes people to love and relate to. Yes. He puts them in a beautiful garden, doesn't he? And, and that's the sort of beginning of the Bible story, which by chapter three goes horribly wrong. You know, the sin comes into the world and people disobey and they turn their back on God and they say no to this wonderful relationship. But actually he's still loving them and wanting them back. But that comes much later through Jesus, ultimately, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, made for relationships, uh, made to relate. Uh, person to person but also person to God that sort of vertical mm. relationship yeah. that we just really can't live without um, we've got time for one more perhaps how about this then um, 
sort of feeding on from the, the last question, what is the difference between a relationship with other people and a relationship with God? Why should we prioritise one over the other? What's the difference between a relationship with other people and a relationship with God? Why should we prioritise one over the other? Well, I, I think um, relationships with people, we're, we're, we're fallible. Um, no matter how hard we try, at times we will, um, we will fail in relationship with one another. Um, we'll, we'll get it wrong, we'll mess up. Um, but the great thing with God is that we know he never messes up. Um, and he always wants uh, the best for us and he's always there for us loving us um, <clears throat> and yeah so we know that we can trust him fully uh, in everything um, whereas human relationships <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the best will in the world um, they you know we mess up don't we we have arguments with each other we fall out with each other um, but, yeah. I was just thinking um, like the um, the more we do prioritise our mm. relationship with God, um, the better our relationships, relationship. or certainly yeah. the the more we want to work at our relationships with each other. Um, so, kind of the closer we get to Him, actually, the closer I am with Jesus, the better wife I'm going to be, and yeah. the better mum I'm going to be, yeah. and the better friend I'm going to be, because I'm going to be walking more closely in His, as you say, yeah. totally unfallible yeah. um, ways. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would just add to that, just remember this um, creator and creature uh, picture mm. as well. Again, mm. from the very first mm. page of the Bible, as a, as a creature, I need to look to the one who made me um, first and foremost. I can look to other people and think, this is wonderful, we can, we can be together. But actually, if I neglect um, my creator uh, and turn my back on him, that's never going to end well. Um, and so Jesus invites us back to our Father. Uh, through yeah. the cross and says look I can forgive you I can restore you I can make you mine I love you enough to die in your place um, come and be mine um, forever in that way and it's just a wonderful who'd want to miss out on that uh, just to focus on human relationships that would seem madness uh, yeah. to miss out on the very thing that we were made for yeah well friends I hope that's sort of helpful um, I think that's the end of our questions for tonight if we've got any left over we'll um, roll them over to tomorrow because um, I think there were some more coming in but um, our time is sort of against us so um, uh, thanks to my two fellow panellists for your contribution this Welcome. evening that's been excellent and I think I'm going to hand over to Tom for our last section this evening Well, thanks very much to Andy and Sue and Wendy. Uh, we hope that's just been really helpful for you. Uh, it brings us to the end of our second evening together, but, but don't worry, we will be back again tomorrow evening for our third and final part as we think about unlocking hope in a world that is full of sadness. Uh, before we sign off, let me just say that in a few weeks from now, we will be running our Christianity Explored course, uh, offering everybody, all, everybody listening in today the opportunity to discover more about the Christian faith it's a really informal time together, uh, but a brilliant opportunity if you would like to find out more, to dig deeper, uh, a time when no question is off limits. Uh, so we would love to welcome you to that. If you would like more details, then uh, text the number that we've been using throughout this evening, uh, 07493 374411. Uh, just say you'd like details about the Christianity Explore course, and we will get back in touch with you uh, with all the details. But as we finish, let me encourage you just to uh, be pondering some of the things that we've been thinking about tonight, this, this opportunity of togetherness in a world of separation, uh, the God who created everything, who made us for relationship and still comes towards us, uh, even in our sin, in our brokenness, he offers us a relationship and community again. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening and we really look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Thank you again. Goodbye.